Hey besties and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be doing a part 2 of responding to your K-pop opinions. Now, let's get started with the video. I definitely agree with this. Now, I don't think that the itzy hate train is okay at all and I feel like a lot of people are going too far with talking about their music and how it's all terrible. But you can obviously see that there's a striking decline with their music quality. I've unfortunately come to terms with the fact that we're most likely never gonna get another Dala Dala moment and I do want them to try new things that fit them. But I feel like after Not Shy, JYP just didn't know what to do with them and started releasing whatever. Honestly, title track wise, the only songs I've loved from them since that change has been Loco and sometimes Not Shy but it just depends. In my opinion, it just seems like their company stopped trying with them which I find very lazy. It's like they only rely on a catchy chorus or dance move and don't try all the way with the entire song or concept. For example, I actually have nothing against Cheshire, but some parts did sound a bit hollow or empty, as if there was supposed missing that was supposed to be there. I still love them down and I think the hate is so unjustified, but I truly hope we get some quality similar to their earlier releases with this upcoming comeback. So far, we've seen groups like TXT, Espa, and in Mixx have their so-called redemption arc from releasing songs that weren't liked by the public. So I hope the same happens for Etsy because we know they have the ability to create amazing songs. So it should be shown more. I completely agree with this, because it's just such a stupid situation to be involved in. I know we all do mindless stuff on social media every now and then, but the fact these people are voluntarily arguing with someone for no reason and then brining up a group that the person they're arguing with stands is just another level of petty and not a funny buddy, but a weird buddy. Maybe it's because I'm just a non-confrontational person, but I just don't understand the whole point of starting an argument with a toxic stand that you know is gonna be toxic and mean. Unless you're calling them out on saying something very offensive or inappropriate about an idol. Now, I do think in some instances that it's okay to give someone the same energy they give you, but involving somebody in an argument that has nothing to do with it just to go lower and be petty is so stupid and truly shows what type of person you are. Overall, it's just a waste of time and does nothing. There was a similar opinion to this based on the topic, but completely different viewpoint where they basically said that idols have access to learn and should know better. Although I still agree with that opinion, I also understand this opinion in some way. Now, I do think there is a point to where an action or problematic behavior can be repeated so many times by different titles that these other idols should just know better to not do that, especially when those past titles get backlash from it, but I do think that some idols don't have bad intentions with it. Although the whole issue of colorism in Korea is actually insane, I do unfortunately think that because it's been around for so long that most of them find it normal when making comments about someone's skin tone or praising paleness. Don't get me wrong. As a human, you should know that mocking someone for something they can't control is messed up and I'm not saying that this or any problematic attitude or action is excusable. I don't think some of these idols come from a place of hatred when saying it, or at least sometimes. I forgot to add it, but this person also added that people still have the right to withdraw their support from a group because of it. And I definitely agree with that, because it's none of our business whether somebody wants to not like a group anymore because of whatever reason. Overall, I don't think idols always have bad intentions with their problematic actions. I do think they would need to be held accountable regardless because no matter how they meant it, they still hurt people, so although I understand this opinion, I don't fully agree. I partially agree with this, because I think Lily has a beautiful voice and is definitely a standout in terms of vocals and Tone has one of my favorite voices in 4th gen. I also think that Sian is a great vocalist and obviously Tail and Do Young are, but they're a 3rd gen group. I think some other amazing 4th gen vocalists are Ningning and Winder from Espa, Kim Lip from Odd Eye Circle, and Su Bin from TXT. Although I would add some, I do pretty much agree with this opinion. I definitely agree with this opinion, but in a certain way. The only thing I really would disagree on is their concepts and styling but that part of G-Idol improved so so much. Like even though they had some unique concepts when Sujin was still the group like Senorita or Oh My God, I think they got better and better, especially with the outfits because to me, they're one of the best dressed groups at the moment. However, 
I do agree with the fact that their songs got worse after she left. I really don't know what happened, but the quality of the lyrics and song structure just fell off so bad. You would think Su Jane was the main composer or writer for the group. Not trying to shade Soo Yeon because she is overall a good producer, but her recent works haven't showed that to where it's either inconsistent or just stale with awkward lines. For the songs, they seem to constantly repeat patterns from their old songs with barely and effort. Now, I do think Queen Card is their best release since Su Jane left but the melodies just don't feel as strong in their songs as they used to. I don't know how to explain it but they just feel empty in some way. I really hope their song quality gets better again, which is almost seems to a bit with Queen Card, because they have amazing styling, great concepts and the members are shining more, so it gets like that again with their music, especially the B-sides. Although it's usually up to the companies to make the decision on whether they want to kick out a member or not for a scandal, I definitely think that fans are the ones that pressure them into it and make it seem like the situation is way worse than what it really is. Now, of course there are idols out there with scandals that were pretty bad and hurtful to certain people and they needed to be held accountable for it more than how they did initially or even being held accountable in the first place. But there are also scandals that were either not true to a certain extent or just ridiculous to even be called a scandal. For example, I know he's obviously still in the group, but the way people are still trying to get Chin from EXO kicked out for having a wife and kids is actually insane. Like, I'm not even joking because if you're still mad about that or even upset at some point then you need help because it's his life and y'all need to let him live. It's not like it was a secret he was hiding. He told y'all and he deserves to have his own family and love life just like every other human being. Another one that I feel like fans made a big deal out of was the Irene scandal. Although I don't think it's right to yell or lash out at someone because of your mood or whatever, I feel like people made it out to be as if she was touring the stylist and cussing her out. I don't care who you are, almost everyone has gotten an attitude once in their life and even though I think she could have handled her emotions differently, we don't know what she's going through and it wasn't even that severe to me. Anyways, I do also think the Sojin one was sad just because I don't think the company listened to her and took time to find out what happened, especially hearing that it wasn't even true. I understand groups have a major influence of companies' decisions for groups. But they also need to listen to the idols as well and fans need to stop getting pissed about little issues instead of ignoring the bigger ones. To be honest, I don't know that much about P1 Harmony besides a couple of their songs and some funny moments of them, but I always thought that Kyo is attractive to me. I don't know if it's because he reminded me of Minji at first and Minji is one of the most attractive male idols to me. But he's just so good looking. I know this opinion is really short, but I definitely agree. I somewhat agree with this opinion, because I have seen many instances where a group's best song barely gets any appreciation or attention, but one of their more bland or just not as good songs are the most popular. For example, Sunmi has so many great songs but out of all of them Gashina is still her biggest hit. It's not bad and makes sense for it to be so popular considering the year it came out, but her other songs like Noir and Full Moon or even Siren just don't even get noticed that much. Like Noir clears Gashina so easily and maybe it's because it was promoted only once, but it's still her best so far. Even though some of Luna's best songs like Hi Hi, Butterfly, and So What are extremely popular, I feel like people don't even talk about favorite. I don't even care if it was a pre-release because they ate down so hard for that to be their first release, like the eatery was crazy. Although some groups most popular songs can be their best, there's also so many amazing songs from groups or soloists that just get overshadowed by their popular ones. I mean, in a way I do agree because yeah, they can change their appearance to fit within the beauty standards. But I think they're chosen way before preparing for their debut. I never really thought that the visual position was that important to begin with, but I feel like they choose idols that naturally fit the standards whether it's their face or body type, or even looking for a specific look for their group and maybe plastic surgery isn't gonna fit for them. I understand this person's point since plastic surgery is so easily accessible, but I kind of disagree. I'm not a professional in singing at all and the only formal singing experience I have is being in choir in middle school for two years, 
but I heavily disagree with this opinion. Like I said, I'm not a professional with that stuff so I don't know much about technique and the proper way to do vocals runs and stuff. But to say that the vocal talent in K-pop is bad is kind of a stretch to me. Don't get me wrong, there are actually a lot of vocalists or idols in the industry that aren't good at all and just honestly need to not sing that much. But there are also many amazing vocalists that aren't just good, but skillful as well. To my knowledge, there are idols out there that can hit a belt or vocal run with ease such as T.E.E. Yeon from Girls' Generation, Jong Yun from SHINee, Jungkook from BTS, Sayeon from Dreamcatcher and many others. The person who sent this didn't compare singers in the US to idols, but I do want to quickly talk about how it doesn't make sense when people compare the two because most vocalists in the West just focus on their vocals only while idols difficult choreographies and I feel like the K-pop industry overall goes for a different singing technique than American ones do. But anyways, I understand that there are some average or not good K-pop vocalists out there. But there are also many amazing ones out there too and I honestly feel that many of these companies are holding some of these idols back from their true talent, which could also be why we don't see as many. But yeah I definitely disagree with this. Similar to the other opinion about plastic surgery, I pretty much feel the same way from my other response. I understand what they're trying to say because idols can sometimes strain as long as 10 years and plastic surgery is very accessible. But I think that the talent part depends because sometimes members aren't able to show their true abilities either because of the concept or other reasons. I also think that since companies have a set date for when they want the group to debut, so that could be another reason. With the plastic surgery one, I feel like from a business perspective they know that the fans most likely want some individuality and not for everybody to look the same. I get that some idols still not being skilled in certain areas considering they most likely trained for a long time, but I halfway just disagree with this opinion. Unfortunately, I agree with this. I like talk that talk and basics from their previous comeback and with set me free. I only really like Wallflower and Moonlight Sunrise but that's about it. It's so weird though, because they were peaking with their b-sides from 2019 all the way to late 2021, like there were barely any misses if we discount some of the songs from the More and More album. So I don't know they went from building up their discography even more to having bland and forgettable songs for the most part. It's kinda sad to me because besides Red Velvet, Twice is my ultimate girl group and still are of course, but this recent year hasn't been that great music wise and it does feel like JYP isn't putting much effort into the as they used to. I do hope that those two comebacks was just a phase and that they have a much better overall comeback with nice concept, b-sides and more. Yeah, I really agree with this. I talked about it before when reviewing it, but it's honestly more disappointing than anything else because I was really looking forward to her solo debut and was hoping that it would be something different and that I would like it, but it just feels like your daddy didn't even try with her. The only thing I actually love about this is the styling and concept with the flowers because it's just so pretty and fits her, but the song just wasn't hitting like I expected it to. It's not bad at all but just boring and overall lackluster. I definitely agree with this opinion, because the fact that Sum only has one album that doesn't even have that many songs and she's been a soloist for 5 years now is kind of insane. I do feel like she's really talented and has a lot of personality that attracts people, so it's honestly very stupid that the black label isn't utilizing that as much as they should and the fact that there's not even really that many active artists under that sub label makes even less sense. I heard that she's supposed to have a comeback soon this year, but we're already halfway into the year so it's most likely that it'll be her only comeback this year. I truly feel like she would be thriving under a different company and have more quality albums too. So yeah I really agree with this. And that's the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please like and subscribe if you'd want and have a good day. Bye besties.